The other day I couldn't figure out what it is that I wanted to draw or paint, so I figured I'll do a master study. I hopped in my Jeep, I drove up to the public library, got me a library card and found the biggest art book I could possibly find. But when I brought it home and started flipping through it, I realized that turns out the Metropolitan Museum of Art only wants to put really, really good stuff into their museum and similarly into their books. So obviously, right? But I did not want to do anything that difficult. I just wanted something simple. I already didn't want to come up with my own idea. So when I started thinking about it, I was like, oh my gosh, all these different artists are out there. And there are so many that are so just masterful in their craft that why not consider them masters? Why only look to a museum or to the old masters, right? So here are seven different ideas that I came up with that I thought would be a lot of fun and make for an easier master study. One place you could pull inspiration from for a master study would be actors and musicians art. Turns out these guys either have a lot of time in between movies or if they're on the road and they're creative people already in general. So what'll happen is they'll dedicate that extra time to drawing and painting and come up with some really cool, amazing stuff. A couple off the top of my head would be John Lennon from the Beatles this really cool contour line drawings, which is where you put down your pencil and you just don't lift it until you're done. And then there's Freddie Mercury who created the Queen logo and he did the whole Queen symbol with all the Zodiac signs on there. And uh, my wife really likes Johnny Depp's art. He is an amazing artist, does this really cool like silk screen printing stuff and mixed media. There's just a lot of great actors. So I suggest that you look up your favorite actor or actress and see if they actually have some art that you could Take a look at it and study yourself. Next up, we have abstract art. And hold on, before you tell me that abstract art is not easy, I'm not saying that it is, but I am saying that I think that sometimes some abstract art, the concepts are a lot easier than it is to do realism like Leonardo da Vinci. My dad's favorite artist is this guy named George Rodrigue, and he is famous for something called Blue Dog. If you've ever seen the TV show Friends, you might have noticed this in the background. Sometimes there's been a blue dog hanging on the wall in the cafe. And my dad loved it so much that he really, really wanted one and said, I made him one. And I actually had a blast doing this one. It was so much fun. Something I got to play around with and just, you know, let loose a little bit. So I really recommend looking for abstract artists that you might like or resonate with, or just try something different for once. Next up, we have landscapes. And while landscapes can get extremely difficult, there's one person that comes to mind that I can think of that makes it a breeze and can get an entire landscape painting done in like 20 to 30 minutes, no matter what. Bob Ross, enough said. <laughs> then we have street art, and the street artist that comes to name is Banksy. Banksy took stencils and he would just spray paint his stencils and make his art. That way he could put it up very quickly, be one place, and then move on to the next. In fact, he set up a 30 day sort of stay in New York and did this. If you haven't seen it, I forget which service it's on. If I can find it out, I'll, I'll put it right here. But it's a really cool demonstration of what you can do, which is 30 days and some stencils and some spray paint. Plus he did a couple of other things. But Banksy is a really cool one to check out for some street art. Also, local street artists are really cool as well. I got this whenever I was down in New Orleans. And what was really neat was this guy ended up saying, well, dude, if you can't find a piece of art of mine that you want, what do you want? And I said, well, I want a lamppost and I want a guy playing a saxophone with a little hat. And he said, do you want a street sign? I said, yes. And he said, what street? And most people would choose Bourbon Street. And I chose Chapatulis, which starts with a T. And uh, it was a really fun, good experience. I learned a lot just by watching that guy and how he interacted with people. So street artists, look up some of your favorites and uh, yeah, give it a go. Next up, we have cartoon art. And while there's so many amazing cartoonists out there, just pick your favorite cartoon and go with any single one of them. I think I would be making a mistake to not mention Disney right now because Disney has a couple things that are rolling out into the public domain, which means that not only would you be able to create some of these original first generation characters that are going into the public domain, but you would be able to actually sell that art as well when you create it. So until they're in that domain, like Steamboat Willie, uh, he's not there until I think 2024. You won't be able to do that, but like Winnie the Pooh is there right now. So you could have a little bit of nostalgia with it, go back to your Saturday morning cartoons and draw something from your past. It could be a little bit of fun. Then we have movie art. And while I love artists like Alan Lee, 
there's no way that his stuff is easy. But what I can find on almost any movie are storyboards. And with these storyboards, it's just quick drawings or doodles of much larger ideas, much bigger scenes taking place. And some movies have storyboards that are very simply drawn, like not much is going into them at all while others are very, very complex and they're trying to get almost shot per shot what they're gonna have in camera. So storyboards can be a lot of fun to play around with because there are so many different art styles in there and you can pick your favorite movie. Another one I wanted to put on this list is comic book art. And comic book art is kinda like movie art. There's so many things that are very much done like a storyboard, but some of these comics out there, oh my gosh, the art is just phenomenal and they are created in these little storyboard formats so you can pick and choose certain scenes or certain characters. And if you want a really good comic book artist to look up, I always just go for Jack Kirby. He did things like X-Men and the Avengers and Captain America, and there's so many cool things that that guy did. So find a comic that you enjoy or your favorite superhero or superpower that you might want and give your hand at some comic book art. And the idea of a master study is not to get super detailed and try and copy every single brush stroke or pencil mark or whatever. It is not to get like that. That is a master copy. And a master copy, I feel, is very different from a master study. A master study, you can kind of pick and choose what you want to learn from that piece of art or from that artist and apply it to whatever type of work that you want. So you could take any of those ideas that I just mentioned and you could do those in the style of Van Gogh or JMW Turner. And actually that painting behind me, JMW Turner is a master study that I did because I wanted to learn how to paint looser. I wasn't trying to replicate the exact painting. I just wanted to learn how to paint loose. And because his style appealed to me, I got to do that with this painting and had an awesome time doing it. It was a lot of fun. And I recommend that you just try any of these any way that you want. Do it in your style, their style, a different artist style, doesn't matter. And if you found this video useful, go ahead and just drop it in a Discord group or a Facebook group and share it with other artists that might be able to help them too.